I just literally gotten a email through my website asking me, how do I get my inputs to work? I'm using a M audio interface and my name is Ella and I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to do. Now, the first thing you need to do, and this is inside a machine, okay? The first thing you need to do is make sure that your interface is active with machine. So in order to do that, you have to go to audio and MIDI settings and it's going to be this little box that pop up and right where it says device, you want to choose the appropriate interface that you would like to use with this, with this machine here. And this is for sampling purposes or even for making a beat or whatever you want to hear sound, you want the, the, uh, the audio interface to be selected, you know, depending on what you have. In my case, I am using the Avid inbox. All right. So I'm gonna leave that selected and you can go to the routing and check those out and you can kind of look and see what you have going on. This thing has two outs. So the front left and the front right. All right. The inputs again is two It's two mic mic pre's on this thing. So the left and the right, there's nothing else connected here because there's, you know, so the other thing that I want to show you guys, some of you, I have this question all the time, so I figure I'll tell you about this now while we in this window. Some guys don't know how to get their their other uh, MIDI devices to work properly. They, you know, some people think that you have to be connected through the machine. You necessarily don't have to. You can just have your devices USB to your computer, and the only thing else left to do is make sure that they are activated here. So in my case, I have the Impact LX49 here activated and it is on. So you just click on here and just make sure you select on off or whatever case may be. These are off because I'm not using these here, but you wanna make sure that uh, your device is on, clicked on, and that's how you activate and then you should be good to go. The outputs you don't necessarily have to worry about unless you got something coming out, but most of the times the idea is to get your keyboard extra MIDI devices to work with machine or you know to do other things this is how you do it so with that being said we're going to visit the area where you need to be in order to receive audio from your from your machine here so in this section here I was already there as you, as you saw in the bottom but you know if say we work from the, the desktop the computer all right what we need to do is click down here where this is a sample icon and just depending on what you know what pad you are selected on we're going to do everything from the computer here so say for a sound one or whatever you want to make sure that you select um, external mono or stereo depending on what you're trying to do in my case what i would do is most of the time you know when you record an audio in say for instance um, voice like now you know I'm I'm recording my voice inside of this video to give you guys instructions as to what to do it will most more so be mono but if you need something to come in stereo you can select stereo there check check one two one two one two hey hey so you can see the audio response here you know what I mean and you you'll be able to see you know the meters you should be able to see the meters and then you can the start here is just for like um working with thresholds so this is how you sample and it's going to wait for something like you got to hit a threshold hey check check one actually we're not going to do it like that uh, the threshold needs to be set somewhere down here oh and by the way let's let's if you don't hear anything, you might be like, yeah, uh, Ella, I changed that. Um, I don't, I still don't hear anything. Here's your monitor mode down here. You definitely want to click this and you can hear the monitor. I mean, you can hear it through, through your system or whatever. Um, the mode down here is just to sync or whatever, but you can select detect. The, 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 um, the detect mode is where you can adjust your threshold back and forth and this is what i was looking for at first you just have to switch the mode my input is one you know i could make it 
input to if I have something or or right this is actually referring to stereo setup or whatever but in my case is is input and left is what I'm going for so that's that's another way to you know make sure that you're set up right and check this out now the threshold here this is basically where the audio needs to hit it needs to hit this point in order for it to start recording all right so that's how you get the whatever audio that you're trying to record that's how you get the um the attack right on the head instead of you know the little space or whatever silence on the on the on, on the front end or whatever you know this is how you would do that we're going to set the threshold like right here and i'm gonna kind of fall back from the mic and you're going to see that this thing won't start until i hit the threshold all right so check this out check so i'm a little bit behind the mic i'm away from the mic and you can see it where it says waiting but until i walk towards the mic yeah check one and you see it, it began to start recording you saw the stop button it went from waiting to stop indicating that i'm being recording and it also says it up here i'm recording and so now i'm gonna stop now we have a waveform here of everything that i've that i said and if i was to activate this button and this is on track one this button one pad one <laughs> um so so that's pad one and whatever you wanted to label it as uh, you can definitely double click here in you know whatever you want to name it is is totally totally your call and let's see if we can activate this this uh towards the mic yeah towards the towards the mic yeah check one and you see it it began to start recording towards the towards towards towards, towards, towards the mic towards the, towards the mic all right so that's pretty much how you do that and then you can treat this sample like you would do like you would treat anything else you know any any other samples that you have coming in you can go to the um actually the sampling section has its own phenomenon things that you can do and different parameters you can play around with um if you have the machine um i'll say machine to actually all the machines any version you have it will give you parameters but it just looks better on the machine studio i have the parameters in front of me it's colorful you know in front of me and i can um i could definitely slice this if i wanted to go to slice mode and this is what happens at the slice between different things according to uh how many slices i have available here or I could do eight or I could do 16 and you know basically what this is is slice between um, 16 different samples across your pad so you have 16 different pads and so each pad will play towards the mic yeah towards the mic yeah but and see I could just jump one button check one all this boarding 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 yeah you know what I mean depending on what pad you press on you can just switch between them all and that's pretty much how, you know, it, it, it works in regards to recording audio in. I'm not going into a deep tutorial as to how the sampler works. I have another video on my channel that talks about that um, as far as sampling. I may do another one just to, because um, there was a few updates to the sampling section. I may just go ahead and do another video on that. But I just wanted to show you guys how to get your audio to work when recording from your interface and this is how you do it i hope you guys really learned something from this video my name is ellip and remember at the end of the day music is art you're the artist paint your picture